Tony Garcia, Michigan beat writer for the Detroit Free Press, joined by Reiner Saban, our Big Ten insider. We are standing on the field. You can see the confetti. It's maize and blue because Michigan uh, is the 2023 national champion. They just beat Washington. What was the final score? 34-13. I was running down to try to <laughs> to try to get the, the final video of, of the moment, uh, so I didn't see if there was any last-second score. But Reiner... 15-0, uh, the fourth team in college football history to do that. Uh, they came back with a one-track mind. We had to hear about it through a, a non-conference season, through two suspensions, through a top 10 game at Penn State, through the 1,000th win, through a home game at Ohio State, through a third Big Ten title, through a Rose Bowl, and now today over Washington. They're the national champions. Yeah, it seemed like their destiny, really. I mean, going back to February when Blake Warren's did it, Center Court at Chrysler Center and said, we're going to go win a national championship and go down in history. I mean, it was a bold declaration and proclamation and prediction, and yet it was entirely believable. I mean, the team opened as number two in the preseason, and, you know, they had they had what it took to be a national championship. They had 20 players in Harbaugh's estimation that was potentially draftable off this roster uh, come next year. Uh, actually come later this year and so it's uh, it, it's a team that really was kind of built for this moment and to see it finally come to pass was pretty you know incredible in some ways just because of where the Mich where Michigan was only three years ago I mean or four years ago when we were in that dark of winter uh, following that 2020 season two and four and a lot of people a lot of questions about Harbaugh's future now there's other questions about Harbaugh's future because he's, he's done so well and then the NFL may be uh, knocking on the door. Yeah, we just talked to Ward Manuel about that uh, yeah. for eight minutes about as animated as, as you'll see him uh, he doesn't he doesn't talk a lot yeah. and so he obviously he obviously had, had a lot to say today um, but he, he was talking about uh, sticking with Jim at that time and uh, we asked him about his future again, and he said, look, I will support Jim no matter what happens uh, for, what, for what he's done. He said, I want Jim here. Should that not be the case, it will be our loss, and we will move forward. That's a discussion for another time. Uh, let's talk about what happened on the field today, because it's sort of fitting or ironic, I don't know which it is, that Michigan runs for 300 yards and four touchdowns in the national championship when the thing we thought they were going to need to do to get over the top was finally air it out, right? And uh, and then and hats off to Donovan Edwards. Uh, just just a brutal season all year long. And then two the, the first two touches of the game, 41-yard touchdown, 46-yard touchdown. Uh, it's yeah. what legends are made of. Well, and styles make fights. And in this case, you know, Michigan running the ball against Washington was the – the recipe of success uh, and you know, kept Michael Penix at bay, um, who actually didn't play all that well no, uh, considering considering uh, his track record, his sensational track record. Uh, but Michigan, you know, hammered them at the line of scrimmage, kind of established the run early, was able to go back to it late and kind of finish off the Huskies that way. And it was, uh, you know, again, the, the, the players that brought them there were the ones who were, you know, Standing and leaving them at the end, Blake Forum, Mike Sanders still. Um, you know, it was just, and, and JJ McCarthy with a, an occasional play here and there, even Colston Lublin, uh, you know, coming up with a big, big catch that really kind of put Michigan back in, in rhythm and kind of helped them close that out. So it was, it was the players that really brought them there that ended up sealing the game for them. Yeah, and you mentioned his name, Mikey Sanders, still with the, with sort of that game ceiling pick, 81 yard yeah. <laughs> return. He told us in the locker room, he's like, "Oh, I was so mad that I didn't return it for a touchdown. I think he'll he'll find a way to get over that <laughs> uh, with that sadness today." Uh, but of course, Will Johnson with the pick, Mikey Sanders still with the pick, uh, Kenneth Grant with a sack, just a pull rush to blow up an entire series. Right? You said it. The stars were stars. Michigan's got a lot of great players. They have a tremendous staff. They have belief. Uh, that's what national. That's what. That's how you get to this point, to a national championship. Uh, 
you, you run out of things to say. And then they're, they're short of the family angle they're talking about too, right? Jesse Minter saying how he remembers being in 93 uh, when his dad was at D.C. for Notre Dame against Florida State, and they beat him, then they lose later, and they don't get that national title. And then he, what he said one of the things when he came here, he wanted to do that. And then you got Jay Harbaugh, who has his kids here, has his father here, obviously Jim, and has his grandfather here, right? I mean, you got four generations of Harbaugh here. It was a family affair uh, today. Yeah, and uh, you know, again, there was everything was pointing towards the season, and I think that really helped Michigan. I mean, they put the whole national championship or bust. I mean, that kind of left them with uh, no alternative. Nope. I mean, they were going to have to win this thing if they were going to complete their mission, and it, you know, it, it created a, a concerted mindset, a kind of set mindset where this is going to be what we're going to have to do, this is what we're going to have to do to get there, and the, the team kind of bought into that whole idea, I mean, I remember talking to Josh Wallace uh, uh, when he uh, uh, when he came to Michigan as a transfer from UMass, they were selling him on this whole championship or bust idea, and you could tell that that was just the, at the top of it, or at the front of their mind, all season long, like, they had to get this done, and, you know, when you only have one real goal, and everything's kind of simplified and streamlined, it makes it pretty easy. You have tunnel vision, that's all you care about. So all the distractions, the cheating scandal, you know, the, uh, the NCAA investigation into recruiting improprieties uh, that led to Harbaugh's first suspension, none of that really put, you know, set them off track. I mean, they were committed to this mission from the get-go, and they completed it despite all this uh, turmoil around them. Yeah, about 30 minutes ago, about 30 yards that way, Samaj Morgan said exactly that to me. I was trying to wrap my mind around how they were unaffected by all this. He said, look, if you're not in Shem, what you say doesn't matter, like period, point, point blank. And that was sort of the mentality they took. And then to bring it back to those transfers, I mean, you think about where they came from, UMass, Indiana, Arizona State, Stanford. These are not winning programs. These are not like historic programs. And I asked a lot, a lot of them, Drake Nugent, Ladarius Henderson, I mean like, how much self-belief do you have to have in order to transfer to Michigan and think you can make it at that level and then be the ones to put it over the top? And uh, they are, a lot of people speechless, right? <laughs> like, it's kind of hard to get, great. I mean, you get some great quotes after the moment, but you get a lot of like, I don't know what just happened. And don't worry, there's plenty of time to process what just happened. Uh, and I'll tell you where you can do it. You can do it on Freak.com, and you can do it on Hail Yes. Parting thoughts, uh, Reiner, as we put a bow on the 2023 season. Well, I think it you know, goes back to Jim Harbaugh. I mean, he came here nine years ago. This was the expectation. I mean, this is what Michigan fans thought he was going to do. Uh, even after the program had gone through seven seasons of mediocrity, the expectation early on was to win the champion uh, at the end of the day. And they had to go through a lot to get there. I mean, you know, Harbaugh had to go through uh, losing to Ohio State five straight times. And he had to go through the 2020 season. And he had to go through all the skepticism and doubts. But in the end, you know, he's, he's here, he's a champion, not without controversy, but at the same token, he brought Michigan to where people thought he was going to do it. And, it, you know, I think that it's particularly gratifying for him because he played at the university and has you know, incredible ties to the university. As he said, he's a Michigan man, and he'll, you know, go down in history as a Michigan, as the field of a Michigan man for delivering this national game. Yep, something that, uh, that Bo Schoenbecker never did, right? And uh, it's hard, it's hard. Jim Harbaugh <laughs> keeps climbing that list of, 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 of all-time Michigan greats, uh, and I think that's where we'll leave it. Uh, we got lots to talk about with Jim, with Ward. The future's uncertain, we were told temporarily parade Saturday in Ann Arbor. More details to come. Still unsure, but uh, we'll be there, and uh, hope you will be too. Uh, so for Reiner, I'm Tony. Congratulations to all you Michigan fans. 34-13 over Washington, the 2023 National Champions. Talk to you soon.